The point is, let's expand on all that. It's the biggest sure. bank out there where you're supposed to get the loan. The point is, is that Cruz, I think, overall is for real. He's yeah. voted good, but he's smarter politically, I think, than Rand Paul. And I'm not knocking Rand Paul, but what is he doing attacking Trump uh, viciously? That's going to make him go down in the polls. Where, where are they coming up with this? Well, you know, we've had Rand Paul red flags for a few years now. And I want to love Rand Paul. And I still love Rand Paul. That's just like we want to love Glenn Beck. But you know what? The red flags that come out you're right in the middle of the Texas State Convention in 2012 when your dad is still running for president. You came out and endorsed Mitt Romney in the middle of the Texas State Convention where your dad is speaking. You know, and now he's doing this. Uh, you know, acting like an establishment party hack. You know what, Rand Paul, here's the thing. Like Alex said earlier, why aren't you attacking Obama? Why aren't you talking about the fact that 80% of the people might vote out their incumbents today? You know what, if we vote out all these sorry incumbents, and if we vote in some great House members, brand new House members, brand new Senate members, shake the tree, shake the Washington tree, then you know what? We can withstand a bad And I've forgotten when he didn't endorse his dad. Well, why do you think he called me up and wanted to come on the show two weeks ago? Because I want to be friends with the Senator Paul. I want him to win his Kentucky seat, but he's acting so establishment now he could lose that. We need all the friends in the Senate we can get. We need all the friends in the House we can get. Why he's doing that is just beyond comprehension. He obviously is not listening to this show. I don't know who he's listening to. Rand Paul, whoever it is you've been listening to, Alex has said it. Turn them off. Fire them. Get them out the door. You know, you need to be like Donald Trump right here and say you're fired to probably about half your staff. <sighs> well, Rand's out of it right now, so it doesn't really even matter. I, I, I just, whatever. I mean, the truth's the truth, and, you know, it is what it is. And all I know is he's been betting on Trump falling, and it didn't happen. And... We need him in the Senate. He helped beat the gun grab bills. Rand Paul's a great guy. He yeah. is good. He's done good work. And and Richard, we're going to continue to track this with you out there as we accelerate towards seven days till the key caucuses. We will talk to you again very, very soon. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up, from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and. And during the summertime, and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Welcome back. Joining me now is Leanne McAdoo. We're going to be looking at some breaking news, not only about Hillary Clinton, but first about Planned Parenthood. It's an amazing story that's just come out that Planned Parenthood is uh, coming after the film investigators in Houston. Of course, we've seen uh, things in Houston before where the mayor, <laughs> who's a significant other, uh, has been a uh, high-ranking official in Planned Parenthood there. We've also had situations where they've uh, tried to intimidate uh, local churches demanding that they turn in their uh, sermons, and now they're coming after the investigators who did the secret filming of Planned Parenthood. Absolutely. So this is, um, you know, updated as a 5 p.m. today, and this is a Harris County grand jury. They're going to indict the pair who were behind the Planned Parenthood videos. So this is a two-month investigation they were working on. They were looking into the allegations that Planned Parenthood Clinic there in Houston illegally sold the tissue of aborted fetuses. Well, now they've cleared the organization, and instead they're going to indict the secret videographers David Deleden and Sandra Merritt. For what? So they've been, <laughs> right. They've been indicted on charges of tampering with a governmental record, which is a second degree felony, could be punishable up to 20 years in prison. And then Deleton received an additional misdemeanor indictment under the law, which prohibits the purchase and sale of human organs. Tampering with a governmental record. Uh, do you have any information as to specifics about that? Well, that I believe is um, they just they said that they went a little too far in trying to create this identity, falsifying uh, documents, um, IDs. Also, they set up an entire website to be this fake tissue procurement company in an effort to gain access to the private areas. And of course, the government does this all the time. Right. I, I talked to Doug Hagman of Hagman and Hagman. He's a uh, an advisor to people doing special investigations. He's been a private investigator himself. And he said, this is one of the most common techniques that law enforcement has. It is not entrapment if you have reasonable cause to believe that something criminal is happening uh, to set up a false identity, to, uh, uh, to do an undercover investigation. The government right. does this all of the time. They just exactly. have to have probable cause to do that. That's what these people were doing. They were conducting an investigation. And clearly, uh, I don't believe that they are cleared of this information. This is a technique to shoot the messenger and let the other people go. Just like we see people doing with Ed Snowden, saying he's a traitor, throw him in jail, don't listen to him. Don't, you know, <laughs> do not, these yeah. are not the droids you're looking for, look away. Or people in yeah. Congress saying, oh, the videos are fake, they're altered, and they and then they admit later they didn't even actually watch the videos. Yeah. So they're just going there, hoping that no one has watched them. We've seen the videos, we've yeah. seen, and yeah. they've also looked released at them in the full videos unedited. And you had people who were, who were protesting this in Louisiana, and Governor Bobby Jindal, uh, to the people that were there at the state capitol, what he did was he took the, the videos in their entirety, projected them for the protesters to watch, since obviously right. they hadn't watched them. Anybody who watches these videos has to be disturbed about the way Planned Parenthood is talking, about what they're, how they're talking about how they can uh, get around the regulations, how they can make this work, or make money. I want to make money for you selling me this, uh, this tissue and so forth right. and so on. And we can 
make sure that we get exactly what you want. Tell us what you want, and we'll make sure that we uh, procure this for you. It's very troubling. And if they weren't doing anything wrong because they admit, oh, we we didn't do anything wrong, but we're going to stop getting profit for yeah. selling this fetal tissue. Yeah. So they they say they have now stopped that practice. So it's just another case of people having friends in high places. Obviously, the daughter of uh, the Planned Parenthood director is Hillary Clinton's uh, camp, one of her campaign managers there. So friends in high places, this is one of her big pushes is, you know, Planned Parenthood, women's rights. We're not going to let them take this away from us. And just so, so that we understand some of the players here, too, as, as we've mentioned before, uh, Cecile Richards, who's head of Planned Parenthood, uh, her mother was Ann Richards, the mm -hmm. former governor here in uh, Texas, very right. highly politically connected, very much a part of the established left. And uh, again, this this mayor who is in Houston, there have been uh, concerns about uh, impropriety there because of the close association that her lesbian partner has as a PR, uh, the head of PR for Planned Parenthood. Right. And so, you know, this is just kind of this whole segment is about skirting the law. There are those we're just kind of pointing out that there are corporations that are above the law. The laws are not apply for them. If you had offered to buy or sell some fetal tissue on the black market, you'd be in prison. But, you know, it, now we see it's the people who are actually, you know, it's the shoot the messenger kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So switching gears here, um, sort of on the same topic of, of corporations, we learned with the Trans-Pacific Partnership that they were wanting personhood so they could be considered as person, have the same rights, yet they, they don't want to be treated as such. They want to be above the law and now actually getting elected to where they can write the law to where it benefits them. Oh, they're openly writing the laws. We just saw that with the driverless cars. We had the Silicon Valley executives come to Obama and say, look, California is going to put some restrictions on us because we've had a lot of accidents there. They're concerned. They want a human as a backup and the vehicles mandated. Uh, make this go away. Right. We want a national, we want you to enact laws at a national level that will shut down any concerns about safety at the state level. And oh, by the way, we'd like a subsidy as well. So they go and they openly now are writing the laws just like they did with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Right. It's, you know, it must be good to be king. So Disney World, of course, you know, we, they're a huge corporation. They had an unprecedented no-fly zone over the Magic Kingdom. They said that this was to protect their heavily trafficked park from terrorism. And the only park in Orlando that has that, because yes. there's a lot of parks in Orlando, but only it's Disney the only said park you in can't. The country yeah, you that can't has have this. a a fly zone over us. The only one in the country. Right, and so they say here in this article, it puts Mickey Mouse on par with the president and Congress, <laughs> which also have no fly zones in its airspace. So this is how powerful Disney is. Now they're saying that they want. They want an exception to this no-fly zone they have so they can fly their own drones over the Magic Kingdom. And nobody else can ha can fly drones at night. That's an FAA thing. You right. can't fly it. But they want to be able to fly drones at night. They want to be able to be the only ones to fly drones over the Magic Kingdom. And, of course, they've been able to get massive subsidies even for their fireworks displays that they have every night. Uh, calling it research into fireworks. So they right. get massive subsidies from the federal government. And so that. you can say, well, these, you know, here's a company that they're creating a lot of jobs and we need to make some exceptions for them. Well, now we also know that they are giving away those jobs with American workers who are very capable of doing those jobs in just another affront to the American people. You know, they're just supposed to be this uh, American icon here. Uh, but now we have some lawsuits coming out claiming that Disney colluded to replace U.S. workers with immigrants. They claim the companies uh, broke the law by using temporary H-1B visas to bring in immigrant workers, knowing that Americans would be displaced from their jobs. These people were actually forced to train their replacements mm -hmm. as um, in well, We've reported on this, and now it's part of the political uh, dialogue in Iowa. We have a commercial that's being played on the airways there where you have a former Disney employee talking about how they came in, they strong-armed them, they said, if you want any uh, benefits, as severance benefits, you will train your replacements and we're right. getting rid of you and bringing yeah. people from India and elsewhere at a fraction of the rate that they were paying them. And then I also saw this. Uh, so the U.S. has hiked the H-1B L-1 visa fee. It's going to hit the Indian IT companies. This is out of the Hindu Times. So you're thinking, oh, well, that's good. They're going to stop them from importing these foreign workers. Well, it'll keep American jobs. It's not about that. The reason why they're doing this is is right now with bringing in these H, H1B, H2B visas, they make 70 and $80 million annually for the U.S. Treasury. Well, with this new uh, decree, they have to submit an additional fee of four grand if they want to bring some workers over. Um, this measure is expected to raise between 1.4 and 1.6 billion 
every year for the next one decade. So it's not going to protect American jobs. It's just going to make more revenue for the federal government. Absolutely. Yeah. Typical. And so, you know, obviously the Center of Immigration Studies, they find there's no evidence of labor shortage in H-2B occupations, which, you know, this this is the tech workers there at H-1B or the accountants and things.